Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to go over some basics of how to spawn characters or just any game object at runtime in your game. So if you've built a game where everything isn't kind of pre-placed and in place right at the start, right at scene load, you're going to want to be spawning things. Or if you're even spawning, you know, weapon shots, projectiles, missiles, anything else, you're going to need to use some kind of a spawning system. So let's go over a couple of the basic methods first. Uh, right now, I just have a character set up. There's an orc shaman here. You can kind of get a quick view of him. Oops, there we go. So it's just a little character with a nav mesh agent and a script that just picks a random location. So you just pick somewhere to walk, and let me hit play, and you should see this happen. He'll just randomly select a point and walk to it, and then he'll pick another point when he gets there and continue on. So let's say I've got a game where I want to spawn one of these every 10 seconds, right? This is a wave-based game, lots of orcs with staffs are coming out and you got to kill them so the easiest and default way to do this is with a spawner that uses a prefab reference so I'm going to turn this on and we'll run through it real quick and then I'll show you how, how the code works so here the box is just for visuals just so I can see where the thing is just a child that's cube and turn that off and just hit play so let's watch there we go a guy spawned and if I select this prefab spawner you'll see there's a spawn delay of 10 seconds so after 10 seconds, we should see another character pop up. There we go. There's another one. He picked a different random location. So how does this work? Let's open up the script and take a look. Oh, let's shrink that down so you can see more of the code and less of the nonsense. Okay, so the first thing you see is we have a float for our next spawn time. This is just when our next character will spawn. We keep that in a float that's just matched up with time.time. .time. And then we have two serialized fields, one for the shaman prefab and one for the spawn delay. And if you look here in the editor, you see the shaman prefab and the spawn delay. And normally the prefab wouldn't be so specific, it wouldn't be shaman prefab. It's usually like prefab or character prefab or something named more generic for reuse. But this is a simple sample, so I wanted to make it explicit. Now we have an update method here. The update just checks to see if we should spawn, and then if we should, we call the spawn method. Let's look at should spawn first. Should spawn just returns true if the current time is greater than the next spawn time. This should probably actually be greater than or equal to, although it's not going to make a noticeable difference. Now, the next spawn time gets set in the spawn method. So if should spawn is true, which by default it's going to be because next spawn time will be zero, then we call spawn. We set the next spawn time to the current time plus the delay. So that gives us 10 seconds in the future as our spawn time. And then we just call instantiate, pass in the prefab, the position, and the rotation. And this just spawns the object defined by this prefab here. Now there's an easy way to mess this up, and that is to have your spawner right here not be referencing the prefab. So I talked about this in a previous prefab video. I'd definitely check it out if you're new to prefabs. But if I assigned the orc shaman from here, that's a bad idea. So then what I'm doing is I'm trying to spawn based off of this object in my scene. And then if something happens to that object in my scene, my spawning no longer works, like, oh, hey, this guy got deleted and we'll run into an error because we're gonna get a null reference that prefab no longer exists as soon as it hits. There we go, we got 10 seconds in. Type game object has been destroyed and you're still trying to access it. So how do you check for that? Just make sure that when you click on your prefab, it should not get highlighted in the hierarchy. Instead, it should get highlighted down here in the project view. So let's reassign the correct one. And then as I click it, you'll see that one lights up. So this is a great solution for, like I said, most situations. There are some situations where you want to pull down characters asynchronously, or not asynchronously, after the fact. So you have like asset packs, or you don't want to load all this stuff in right away, and you want to load it from what's called the resources. So to do that, there's another type of spawner that I'm going to show you, and we'll enable this right here, the resource-based spawner. So the way this works is it loads the game object assets or whatever assets from a folder named resources and you see here I have a resources folder and I put an orc shaman folder into there and right now there's just a, um, a mesh in there there's no actual game object in there but if I hit play let's just watch what happens let me turn off this other orc shaman hit play and you see that something did spawn there but what was spawned was actually just the mesh so that's because that's what's in this folder and I'll show you the code for that in two seconds. First, let's make it work. So what I can do though is put the orc shaman prefab into my resources folder instead. 
or it's a subfolder of the resources folder and hit play and let's watch what happens. Oh, look, we still got the same mesh. So let's take a look at the code and see how this is all working and then I'll show you how to fix that. So in the resource based spawner, um, we have the shaman prefab here as a game object and there's no serialized field because we're not editing it in the inspector. We also have the same spawn delay and spawn time and um, our should spawn is exactly the same. So for awake, what we do is we call resources.load and we have to give it the path to the name of the object. There's also an overload here where you can give it a type. So we can do a specific type of object like I could do a load or it can do it with generics texture 2D if I want to load some textures and spawn those you know, at runtime or assign them at runtime. Um, now what's happening here is we are loading in the orc shaman but we're not giving it a type so what it's finding is that mesh it just happens to be the first thing. So a couple ways that we could fix this. The easiest quickest way would be to just select the orc shaman model and rename it like orc shaman mesh. Um, it's a little bit messy though I don't really want to be renaming things just to get the right object to spawn. You can see here that's the correct one now and if we switch it back we'll, we're going to get the uh, the model again. All right, there we go, and we got the model. So the other way we can fix that again is with those generic types that I was talking about. So if we do something like, well, what does this guy have on him? He has the random walker script on him. Now what it's gonna do is find him as a random walker, or it's gonna find a, an orc shaman with that random walker script on it. And then what I'll do is cast this as a random walker, and get the dot game object there. So now we're still getting the same game object prefab, but we're making sure that whatever orc shaman we grab has the random walker script on it. So let's hit play again. And without him renamed, you see we got the correct one. Now, if you're not sure if you should be using the resources.load method versus the prefabs, you should probably be using the prefabs. Loading the resources at runtime is a little bit more advanced and not extremely useful if you're not streaming in assets or doing updates. Uh, a lot of the time it adds a little bit more confusion and it also adds those string based names which are I'm not a real fan of because as soon as you rename something it gets harder to find and finding the references can be a little bit of a pain. Another important thing to look out for though is if you're spawning a lot of objects and then destroying them and respawning new ones to replace them, things like projectiles or you know where you're shooting things out really fast and they get destroyed on impact or you have lots of characters that are spawning that you're killing and then spawning new ones to replace them. In those cases what you want to look at is object pooling and that's just a system where you're not reinstantiating the objects, instead you're deactivating them when they die and reactivating them when they need to spawn and then kind of doing a reset in code. And the reason for this is primarily garbage collection and just performance. You're gonna see some performance issues as soon as you start spawning and destroying a whole lot of objects, especially on mobile or consoles, but it, it hits every platform. So definitely look into pooling. I'll put a link for my pooling videos so you can check them out and see. It's really easy to set up and actually simplifies some of this process a lot of time. Again, you only wanna use that on things that you're actually destroying and recreating. Otherwise, it's kind of overkill, but it's super important to know about. And again, if you liked the video, please don't forget to share it with your friends, like, hit subscribe or whatever, and uh, thanks for watching.